All right, here we all are. Welcome everybody to the first ever uh, live workout. Um, we are calling these the Wahoo All In live workouts presented by the Sufferfest. Uh, thanks for joining today. Um, we felt like with the current situation uh, in the world right now and more and more athletes turning to indoor training to stay healthy, fit and happy, we thought this was a great idea to connect some people um, and do some workouts together and also connect with some of our great coaches and athletes that we work with on a weekly basis. Um, behind the scenes, the Sufferfest has created specifically four, they're, they're four week training plans called All In. These plans have been designed to address an athlete from a holistic standpoint, folding in both indoor cycling workouts, cross training and yoga, and mental exercises into the plan. You're even gonna see some swimming exercises get rolled in as well. We'll be doing these live workouts every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mondays will be cycling focused. Wednesdays will focus on strength and yoga. And Fridays will be focused on a recovery ride. They'll be hosted by Neil, but we'll have a special guest join in. Next week's recovery ride, just a little teaser for you guys. Next Friday, we're gonna have world time trial champion Rohan Dennis join us. So get those questions queued up because he is gonna be live with us at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, these plans, the, the all-in plans that we've created, these plans are completely for free. Uh, we feel like it's, it's the best thing to do right now is get people indoors, training, um, staying healthy uh, holistically. So the way you can use these right now is sign up today by checking out the Sufferfest website at thesufferfest.com or uh, check out the link in the description to the video below. Now, moving on to what we have today. Um, today's workout, today's all-in Sufferfest workout is GOAT or greatest, greatest of all time. If you are a current Sufferfest app user, then open your Sufferfest app and search for GOAT workout and follow along. Or if you don't have that set up and you're not, you're not ready to go yet with a subscription, uh, get that teed up for next Monday. But in the meantime, you can simply follow the workout prompts from Neil today by adjusting the resistance on your trainer to the required amount. We will start the workout in five minutes. Let the countdown begin. Uh, during the workout, I will try to answer any questions you have, but also join us on Friday for the recovery spin with Neil. As I mentioned already, Rowan Dennis is gonna be joining us. It's very nice of him to join. Um, and we're really looking forward to connecting with Neil and Rowan, probably reminiscing about some things and also taking a lot of questions and, answer, and answering some questions from you guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and shift it over to uh, Neil and he will begin to describe today's workout and kind of what we have in store for you. Um, and then we'll get started. Neil, over to you. Hi, I'm Neil Henderson. I'm gonna be leading today's all-in workout. As Matt mentioned, this workout is called GOAT. And uh, we're just gonna give everyone a few minutes here to get joined in, get connected, and get ready for today's workout. Uh, while we wait, let me just show you a couple things. Um, if you're able to see my workout screen, I'm gonna adjust a few settings here, which uh, I'm just gonna to go to where the gear icon is here. And this is where you can pair any devices if you need on the add device. If you are using a uh, trainer that doesn't, you know, if you're not using a power meter, you can actually use a show virtual watts and you'd be able to select which kind of trainer. I'm gonna be going in erg mode today here to start. I may switch over to our level mode, which is where then you can control the resistance a little bit more. And one of the other really cool features here is over here on this tab, we can adjust all of the target power uh, values. So right now today's workout, as you see on the, on the workout profile is really targeting all FTP. Um, I've already dialed it down and I'm just gonna bring it here for myself at 80% today. You can adjust individually any of the 40p values with that, or you can just adjust the entire workout by unclicking that. So either way, we're gonna get a similar effect. And once you're done with that, go back to the app and we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a little uh, description of what the session is today. So GOAT, is a climbing workout. We're gonna be riding in Switzerland with uh, Michael Cotty, and he's a super rider with the Cole Collective, and we're gonna to be touring some of these fantastic uh, eight different climbs in Switzerland. 
our main effort is going to be limited levels in a big gear just below the threshold with one minute recovery between. The focus of this is really about developing a kind of force and torque that can help you ride stronger as you uh, get outside, ride climbs, or just develop that overall uh, kind of neuromuscular strength endurance, we sometimes call it. It's not pure strength like uh, lifting you know, a heavy weight. It is a little bit more strength endurance, but that's what we're going to be focusing on today. During this, you're going to feel hopefully a little bit more of a muscular stress, your quads, hamstrings, and glutes a bit, and maybe not quite as much of a cardiovascular stress. So if you ride at a, a given power output in a lower cadence, like we're going to be doing today, your heart rate is going to be a little bit lower and your breathing rate is also going to be a little bit lower. So it's going to be a little bit more what we typically would call a peripheral effort as opposed to a cardiovascular stress with a session like today. So as a reminder, uh, our tip of the day is uh, with, with our all input program, we put out uh, a number of tips. So today's tip is uh, the sugar uh, inflammation promoting foods from nutrient dense natural foods like uh, a uh, popcorn or pistachio nuts versus potato chips or say something like, uh, you know, salmon over a, uh, a processed meat. Uh, for you vegetarians, plenty of options out there. Um, but if you're thinking about drinking, then, you know, sparkling water versus soda, far better option. So uh, staying healthy from that perspective is definitely uh, important. We're going to get started here in just about 20 seconds. So go ahead and get the the workout loaded and get ready and join me here in 15. In 10. And in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. And we are off. So the workout, we do have a bit of warm up. I'm rolling along fairly easy here to begin. As you see, if you are using the app or if you you're looking at mine, we're going to have a few things on the screen. Go from left to right. We have the distance covered. We've got heart rate and a target there, which again, everyone's target heart rate may be a little bit different. You're going to have the power target and then your actual power which it's gonna be a little bit easier to, to meet that if you're in erg mode. And then next to that is the cadence target and then a perceived effort scale. So right now during this warm up, should be about a two out of 10. So not too stressful. Speed on the right, if you have a speed sensor connected, you'll get that. Or if you're using a uh, power meter, we actually have what we call soft speed. Soft speed is kind of a, an estimated speed based on the power output that you are generating. So, I'm just gonna check my settings here. I'm on a Wahoo kicker bike. So just gonna set the elevation so that the app can control it here. So as you can see on the screen here, we are heading to Switzerland. It's a beautiful place to ride. If you love mountains, you love Switzerland. If you don't like mountains, well, it's still beautiful. As you can see, I maybe not built as much like a climber. And so uh, it's not the uphills that I enjoy as much. It's really the downhills that are my happy place. But in order to go down, you gotta go up. So I've learned to like climbing. So right now we're just kind of transitioning, getting our body ready for exercise. So warm up is about just getting that transition from rest to harder exercise. You wanna be bringing up heart rate a little bit, breathing rate, temp temperature of the muscles, getting them ready to do some harder work today, even though it's not a 
really intense session, you're still going to be doing some working. So this is Michael here, feeding a friend, getting some water to that cow. So in the app, if you're looking at it, you're seeing, you know, some commentary about that neuromuscular aspect of this workout. Neuromuscular is really about connecting from brain to the muscles. And with that recruitment, we're going to be using a little bit more force. If you want maximal neuromuscular recruitment, you're either going to be doing it via maximal speed, which would be cadence, or maximal force or torque. Today, we're going to be siding a little bit more on the torque and force side of things. Not quite maximal. And we just have a little bit of an increase there in our power target. And you can see with the kicker bike, I'm up at a 5% grade now. All right, continuing our warm up, we're going to have a couple little efforts to kind of get things primed and be ready. So, again, you can just kind of monitor heart rate, power, cadence. As you see, my heart rate's a little bit lower than the target. I'm actually only running at 80% of the workout target, so it hasn't adjusted the heart rate zone for that. That's okay. Here's a little more moderate effort, a little higher cadence around 90. As long as you got the gearing, it's possible to climb at a high cadence, depending on the climb. Virtually, you can almost do it anytime like this, especially in erg mode. It's going to give you the power target, and then you can match whatever cadence. So as we go into the workout, all I'm gonna to need to do is just slow down my cadence and the, the kicker bike is gonna give me that resistance that I need to hit that power target automatically. It's the nice thing about erg mode. So one of the things to think about is keeping your upper body relaxed and still. A little bit of an easier section here. Think about your breathing. Try to breathe with your diaphragm, not just breathing up here with those intercostal and chest muscles, but think about breathing down with the diaphragm deeper. If you've never ridden in Switzerland, I would highly recommend it when you get a chance. Every summer we have our SUF camp that we run actually in Switzerland at the UCI headquarters in Egla. And we do a mix of riding outdoors on big climbs, we're riding on the velodrome, we ride cyclocross and even BMX. It's kind of like a dream cycling vacation. Gonna we'll be moving up into the next bit of effort here. So power target has come up a little bit and we're gonna slow down that cadence. So on the smart bike, if you have a trainer connected, all you need to do is adjust your cadence and the resistance will be automatically adjusted. If you're on a trainer that's not as dynamic, you just need to shift, use those gears to try to get as close as you can to the power and cadence target. So if you're doing the workout, at the full targets at 100%, you'd be pushing closer to like a six out of 10, still below your threshold though. Usually in our software, the way we refer to threshold or FTP is at about a seven and a half out of 10 on that RPE scale with 10 being your all out. And 
And we're gonna be slowing down that cadence just a touch more. Resistance is up a little more. So if you have the workout playing at home, you should be hearing Michael Cotty. And so when he's speaking, I'm gonna be quiet so I don't talk over him. So upper body still, legs just driving up and down, strong and steady. Heart rate should be coming up a little bit. And we're gonna have a little easing off here in just a few seconds. So power target's gonna drop and cadence gonna kind of bring it back up closer to 90 RPM, relax. Think about dropping those shoulders down. So we're here on the Susten Pass in Switzerland. Absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna do a little bit of a, a primer effort. This doesn't count as one of our uh, eight efforts. So this is still just warm up. Gonna be thinking about driving down with our quads and glutes and pulling up with hamstrings and hip flexors. Here we go. Slow down that cadence. Power, if you're running at 100%, you'd be right around threshold. I'm a little bit under that as I've adjusted things down, I'm trying to keep things more reasonable. It'll also allow me to continue to talk to you. If I was at threshold, wouldn't be talking quite so much. So, or you'd hear a lot more of me breathing. So try to keep that to a minimum. So Cadence target right now is 70 RPM. So not full big gear yet, but just enough to get things activated. For anyone else who lives at altitude like I do here and I'm in Boulder, Colorado, we definitely tend to have to breathe a little bit more to get that oxygen delivered to those working muscles. All right, now I'm in my happy place. Two minute descent, downhill. You don't have to spin out the high cadence right now. Just around 85 RPM. Think about keeping everything relaxed. Not a bad idea. Take a first swig. If you haven't been drinking yet, definitely do that. For a workout that's shorter like this, 42 minutes, not super intense. You could probably get away with just water, depending on what you've been doing, eating and drinking throughout the day. All right. Love those ribbons of snow up in the mountains. So think about keeping that upper body relaxed. Another thing you can do on an indoor trainer is be sure to change your position. So right now on a descent, I can go ahead down into my drops, kind of simulate more if I were riding outside, you probably change your position where you're holding on the bars a lot more than you do when you're inside. So to make sure that you're getting that conditioning from different positions, make sure that you are switching up where you hold onto the bars throughout your indoor rides. Easy on this, I'm just mimicking that downhill position and going down in the drops. Don't necessarily need my brakes, but I've got access to them if I need to. All right, 15 seconds till our first big gear effort. So we got a really low target here. We are gonna be pushing 
moderate effort here below threshold, but slowing way down to a glacial cadence of 50 RPM. If you happen to have issues with your knees and big gear work tends to strain them, then definitely go ahead and increase your cadence so you don't want to flare things up. So 50 RPM is definitely a bit slower than my average cadence. And I'm assuming for most of you out there, 50 is going to feel a little bit low. That's okay. That's the idea on this session. A little more force production gives you a better ability to think about your pedal stroke. Driving your heel down. Excellent. If you've been to Switzerland, you'll know the trains are fantastic. They run spot on time, Swiss precision. It's very good. It's my recommended way of getting around other than a bike if you're in Switzerland. Very good. We got 30 more seconds in this first effort. Nice and strong. Driving that heel down, make sure, keep that upper body relaxed, shoulders down, breathe using that diaphragm. Keep trending to go higher on cadence, but just try to keep it down there. All right. We got a minute recovery between each of these. So as a setting on this, I didn't adjust the recoveries based on the my changes in intensity. So recoveries are still gonna be fairly, fairly easy. And cadence, we wanna go back up closer to about 90 RPM. If you're listening, head home to the workout. I think we're hearing a little bit of chatter from maybe the Apollo 11 mission. All right, 20 seconds till our next effort. Get ready for climb number two. We're going to the Gross Scheidig climb next. Slow down your cadence. And here we go. Solid climb here. My kicker bike is up 9%. Pushing that big gear, trying to keep my upper body relaxed and still. Very good. Gonna have to take a ride on the post bus sometime. Have not yet been on it. Excellent work. Keep pushing that big gear here, steady, strong. Relax those fingers. Don't grip and white knuckle your bars. Just keep them relaxed on there. If you want, you can go ahead and put your hands on the tops of the bars. Typical climbing position. I've got my clip-on aero bars here, so i got to go a little wider than I would normally hold, or I could go all the way up on top of the aero bar pads. Excellent work. Just 20 more seconds here. Steady, strong, all the way up. Nice work. Coming to the end of effort number two. 
and get to recover with some goats. Get that cadence up. Uh, spin those legs out, relax that upper body. Good job. All right. Starting to do a little bit of work here. Not tapped out or anything, but cool thing I've got my headwind fan paired to my heart rate monitor. which allows it to increase the fan speed based on my heart rate. So that's a pretty cool feature. If you have, have one, definitely make sure you pair it to your heart rate monitor or speed sensor. If you have a speed sensor that you can pair it to, that'll also do it. All right, climb number three, Furka Pass. As you can see, James Bond Street, this is seen from Goldfinger. And once upon a time, I got stuck on the Furka Pass in the winter. So way back in 2002, I was racing the Winter Triathlon World Championships held by the ITU. ITU is the International Triathlon Union. That's the international governing body for, for triathlon. And winter triathlon is running on snow, mountain biking on snow, and cross-country skiing to finish. We had competed in Brusson, Italy, and we're driving to a friend, Mark Rue's house, who is actually the world champion that year. He lived in Liechtenstein, and a uh, friend and I were driving, and we had our handy Michelin map. This is way before GPS, at least at our level. 2002, we didn't have access to all the good stuff. We looked at our Michelin map, and first started off heading through the Mont Blanc tunnel, which was closed because of the fire that had happened a couple years earlier. Flipped around, different route. Ended up going up the Furka Pass in heavy, heavy snow. And we saw a car just like ours, an Opel Astro wagon, that was crashed, being pulled down or towed down on a uh, flatbed truck. And we decided we're going to flip it around and uh, stay the night down at the base before trying to get over to Liechtenstein the next day. All right, recovery time, get that cadence up. The funny thing we found out is the Furka Pass is even completely closed in the winter. It's just a uh, train that carries cars through that you could take. So we had to go an alternate, alternate route the next day. And if you don't know about Liechtenstein, it's a principality surrounded by Switzerland. Pretty cool, pretty cool country. All right, get ready. Effort number four. Again, descending if you want. Going in those drops would have been a good thing. We're going to slow down cadence now. Going to big gear on the Newfoundland Pass. Very good. Think about smooth pedal stroke, driving your heels down a little bit more. Helps you engage your glutes a little more. If you have your toes pointed down, you'll do a little bit more work with your quad, a little less with the glute. So drop that heel down just a little bit. Okay. 
Very good. Michael just mentioning that some part of training and riding and racing relies on your mental, in some cases, even more than just the physical. We have some mental training modules within the Sufferfest app that you can check out to work on your mental game. If you're not training as much physically, you can spend some of that time and energy working on building a strong set of mental skills, which will pay dividends. Very good. Approaching the end of number four, coming up on halfway through our climbs. Nicely done. And go to a descent here. Again, if you want to drop down into the drops or change your position out on your brake hoods, just switch it up. It's a good idea. As you can see, if you're following along and seeing my screen, the power output is pretty much matched to a T. That's, that's the value of, of ERG. I'm going to go ahead now and switch over my settings to level mode. And I'm going to go ahead and put things in at a level five since I'll be climbing. Hopefully, that should be enough. Might even bump up FTP. I'm feeling good here. Heart rate's still pretty low. Make those little adjustments and game on. And heading into our next climb. So now I need to shift to hit those targets. So going into a big gear, about 55 RPM target, 240 watts. So this is the Gotthard Pass. If you watched the uh, 2019 Tour of Switzerland, you would have seen pretty good battle. Stage seven, they finished up this. The uh, victor of the day last year was uh, Egan Bernal, pretty solid rider who uh, went on to win a pretty big race. A few weeks later in France, you may have heard of it, the Tour de France. And uh, another guy that I know pretty well, I'm going to talk with next week, finished third on that day. That was Rowan Dennis. He ended up finishing second overall behind Egon at the uh, 2019 Tour of Switzerland. So might have to ask Rowan about what he thought of the Gotthard Pass, the cobbled climb last year at Tour of Swiss. So you can see, not hitting the power targets quite as steady now. Pretty amazing visuals there. So as you can see, my power targets a whole lot more, or my power output's a little more variable. When you're riding in level mode, you're gonna have to give yourself a little bit of variation between the power and cadence target. You're not gonna hit it quite as precise as you would in ERG mode, but that's okay. All right, shift up into an easier gear here. Gonna go down into those drops. All right, five down, three to go. If you want to stand up, just relax. A little roll of your head, generally side, forward, side, rather than back. Don't want to get so much cervical extension stress. So I'm thinking about pedaling and breathing here. Recover, recover. All right. Time for number six. Yeah, shift into a bigger gear here. Going to the Umbrail Pass. 
50 RPM target. Excellent. Very good. Just find that kind of right gear that gets you as close as you can. So play a game. Nice work. So on the 13K, Umbra pass here. And that upper body relaxed. Driving hips, glutes, quads, heel drop down. Very good. Got 30 seconds here. Nice work. If you have a towel at home, I suggest using one side for sweat and the other side for other. All right, shifting into an easier gear here. Again, change up that position a little bit, bringing up that cadence, shifting into an easy enough gear. Bringing that heart rate down. Very good. Excellent work. Got last two climbs to go, and we're heading to an amazing climb called the Col du Semech. If I recall, it's like 27K long, and it's absolutely amazing. We rode it at the uh, 2017, just after the 2017 uh, suck camp. Here we go. Shifting back up, big gear. 50 RPM, going out with local Alan Rumpf here. Alan's a super rider, fantastic person, knows these roads like the back of his hand. He's, he grew up just outside of Aigle in Switzerland, so he knows this area like no other. And just like Mike, he goes uphill really well. Been able to ride with both of these guys. And uh, I'm able to breathe a little better and talk when we're on the flats. Once we go uphill with these guys, I uh, generally have to let them go at their pace and I go at mine. And we meet up at the top. They usually don't have to wait more than an hour, usually. Nice. Number seven here. You're doing great. Stay steady, strong, engaged. With your core, if you think about your transverse abdominis, that helps give you that solid power transfer from your core all the way out. Rather than hunching or rotating too far forward, think about drawing your belly button towards your spine. That'll keep you rock solid and steady. Good work. Just a few more seconds here. And go ahead and shift. Let's listen to 
Alan. Swiss fighting cows. All right, the Sunet special cows, the fighting cows. Pretty special, only found right there. All right, I don't think I'd want to fight a cow. Here we go, back to big gear. One more big climb up this Sunet. 12% here, nice and steep. Again, this climb is absolutely amazing. At the very top, either I have to flip around and just do it out and back. Very good. So at the top, there's also a uh, basically like a big chairlift telefreak that you can take down. It drops you down into the German speaking side, and then you can ride back to Egloof. So, oh, I think it was about a four or five hour round trip, maybe six, I just don't recall. From Egloof, absolutely fantastic ride. This tunnel at the top, very cool. Might be a good idea to bring a light as it is not lighted. Not quite a kilometer long. Has these little portholes out the side every few hundred meters like that. Pretty awesome. Nice work. Almost home. 20 seconds left in number eight. And that is the end of those eight efforts. We have a little bit of an extended cool down here and a little bonus effort in the, in the cool down. But for right now, nice and easy. Cadence back up around 85 RPM. So again, you should have felt that a little bit more as a muscular effort throughout than a cardiovascular stress. So it doesn't mean you aren't hopefully sweating a little bit and breathing a little bit harder, just not tapping out. It's kind of the idea of all the all-in plans. We're not trying to go to next level fitness here in these few weeks. It's about just kind of maintaining our fitness and maintaining our wellness and health. That's really the most important thing. I say to the athletes that I coach all the time, fitness first, or health first, fitness second. So health first, fitness second really is what we're looking for here. If you stay healthy, when it's time, you can get fitter. Very good. Think still about that upper body. You can still drop down, changing up that position. Just like Alan and Michael. Very good. Uh, they have some fantastic foods there in Switzerland, in that area, especially the raclette, the rye bread, white wine, the fondant du Valais. It's fantastic. All kinds of good stuff. Thinking about food makes me a little bit, a little bit hungry now. Might have to think about what's next to eat today.
And I got some yogurt and banana and and granola. I think I'll do that. Be my option for today. Maybe throw in some blueberries. Just think about how you pedal as you switch up those hand positions. What's going on? You feel one side of your body a little tighter than another, something you could address after your ride. All right, we're gonna get ready for a little, call it a low tempo effort, kind of part of our cool down effort here. If you've gone really hard, it's actually often better to go ahead and bump up the effort for a minute or so, 30 seconds, minute, maybe two minutes, into a low or moderate temp tempo effort to help actually speed the recovery with some of the metabolites, like lactate. So I'm just going to a moderate effort here, higher cadence. There we go. This will help in recovery. We did a quite a bit of this with our US uh, Women's Team Pursuit program that I worked with at the 2012 and 2016 Olympic Games, having a short but effective cool down, especially when we had two rides in one day, two, uh, two important rides in one day, like at the Olympics, semifinal and a final, optimizing that recovery with just a few hours between, really important. So even while we're at this higher cadence, you know, think about keeping that upper body still, relaxed, and even just dropping my elbows down like if I were descending, I'd be wanting to get out of the wind a little bit, get a little more speed. Very good. Got just a couple minutes left total. Two more seconds of our tempo effort. And there we go. Nice and easy final two minutes. Cool down. It's effectively kind of a transition from this higher level of work back down towards rest. Better than just an abrupt stop. Sure, you can do that, but it's not good for you overall, especially actually your heart doesn't really like that. When we do uh, clinical testing for people with cardiac issues, if we do a really hard effort and then have them stop immediately, that's actually when we start to see a lot more, more uh, cardiac abnormality. So always better to transition your body back down, steady, easy to finish. So remember, if you go to the Sufferfest training app, you can download, you've got a 14 day free trial. And if you use the code, Suff all in, or Wahoo all in, you'll get an extra 30 days available for free within the app then, once you subscribe. And all of our training plans are always free to subscribers in the app. And we've got a mix of things. We've got our all-in plans like this, and we've got other ones for specific events. Let's prepare when that time comes to get ready for something. Heading into our last 30 seconds here. Sweet little car there. Great job. Thanks for joining. Appreciated riding along with you today. Stay well. And I'm gonna head Send things back over to Matt. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for leading that great session. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm inspired to ride. I'm sure you guys are all tired, but I've been sitting behind the computer here. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, like Neil said, check out the Sufferfest. Go to thesufferfest.com. Use uh, all in self plan for 30 days um, on top of that 14 day. Um, also, just check out the link in the description below. Um, beyond that, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same same time, 12 p.m. Eastern. 
Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll be doing a cycling workout on Mondays, uh, yoga, kind of core, um, stretching, and some strength stuff on Wednesdays. And then uh, on, on Fridays, bring your questions. We'll be doing a Q&A uh, with Coach Neil along with um, – a special guest next week's we'll kick it off with uh world time trial champion rohan dennis so uh hope to see you guys all on monday right back here same time thanks again have a great weekend